Hi friends, it's Nathan, a second year pharmacy student studying at the University of Waterloo, but currently doing a placement at a hospital in the surgery department. Welcome to my channel, welcome back to my channel. If you like my content and personality, please subscribe, follow me on Instagram and TikTok. All my social media will be linked below. For today's video, I want to talk about what to do after getting a bad grade. Now, this is a tough situation to be in, but it's a situation that every single student, including myself, has been in and will probably continue to be in as long as we're in education. There's no shame in failure and to prove that, express your feelings in the comments below and myself as well as this community will be there to support you. Also, after watching this video, if you're curious to know how I got A's in biology, chemistry, and English and how you can too, I will have those videos linked above. It was a series I did a while back on my channel. But in this video, I'm going to be going over my process of receiving the grade, reviewing the work, and then finally making an action plan. So if this is something you need, then keep on watching. Receiving the grade. So you wrote your exam, you submitted your assignment, and a few weeks have passed. You're either sitting in class and your teacher is about to hand back your test, or you get a little notification at the top of your computer that there's been an update to your mark. Regardless of the situation, take a breath and remind yourself of how hard you've worked. Recall how much you've studied for this exam, how you were writing this paper on the bus on your way to your part-time job. Remind yourself of how hard you work despite the odds, despite the circumstances that you were in. Now that your mindset is right, you have to make sure that your physical space is a comfortable one. If you wanna view your grade at home in the privacy of your own bedroom, that is perfectly fine. I am the same. I could be at dinner with all my friends and we get our marks back and they're checking right then and there. For me, no thank you. One, because I need to film it for the YouTube channel. But two, because marks do mean something to me, I really do want to have that moment to myself. I personally recommend viewing it on your own because if it is good, then you can call up your friend and you can celebrate together later. But if it is bad, the last thing you want is an audience. And I know from experience that your friends are going to say things like, it's only one grade, or the teacher is so unfair, this teacher is hard. I think their intentions are right, but in that moment, there's nothing that I can say that will make you feel better. So it's just better off to be in your own space and in your own kind of bubble for these moments. Reviewing the work. So you flip over the paper or you click on that little notification and you get a mark that you don't like. Your first instinct may be to throw away the paper or to slam your laptop shut, but do not do that. Take it all in. Take a breath and begin looking at your mistakes. Begin reviewing the feedback. And I know it can get really overwhelming, so just take it slow and take it easy, but try to push through this moment because that feeling you get in your chest, that feeling of rejection, of failure, that is a feeling that you need to get comfortable with. You eventually need to find joy in it even. Failure and rejection is something that will occur to all of us and we need to kind of shift that framework and shift that idea from a negative to a positive. It's another opportunity for you to get better. It's another opportunity for you to prove someone wrong. It's another opportunity for you to steer maybe to a different direction, find out what you like, what you don't like, what you're good at. It's an opportunity. And when we push through those moments of uncomfortableness, we begin to see that silver lining. But as you're looking through your work, ask yourself questions like, were these careless mistakes or do they show something that you need to work on? Did you follow the assignment instructions or do you need to review the rubric more before submitting? Continue to look through your work and at this point, your throat may be starting to get tight, you may get really heavy eyes and you feel the tears coming on. Allow yourself to cry, allow yourself to get emotional. It is valid, it is okay to be upset, especially if you worked hard or even if it dictates something bigger like college or a scholarship. I'm really emphasizing to not suppress it because I think society always tells us that we should conceal and don't feel and Especially with grades, it's so hidden and it's so taboo, which is why I show all my live reactions to my grades on this channel. I want transparency and I want to show people that sometimes you work really hard and you get the result, but sometimes you work really hard but still fall a little bit short. And that's the nature of education. So don't ever suppress it. And I know in that moment that anything anyone tries to say won't make you feel any better. It's one of those things where time is gonna heal it, but 
time takes time. So you're just gonna kind of have to work through it out. So take a walk, take a shower, go hug a friend, a family, go listen to some sad music and really let your emotions out and do what you need to do to cope. And after that little break, you can come back to it when you're feeling more composed than yourself to continue reviewing your work with a clear state of mind. And a key message from this video that I want you guys to take away is that if your mental health is suffering, therapy can be incredibly helpful, which is why I wanna tell you about BetterHelp who has kindly sponsored today's video. BetterHelp is an online service that will assess your needs and match you with a licensed therapist. You can start communicating with them in less than 48 hours. This is not a crisis line nor self-help. It is professional therapy sessions that are done securely online. BetterHelp has over 20,000 therapists, so there is a broad range of expertise that you may not have access to in your local area. In your account, you can message your therapist and you'll get timely and thoughtful responses. As well, you can even schedule phone and video conferences with your therapist to kind of talk through more details. BetterHelp is committed to finding great therapeutic matches, so if it isn't the right fit, then you can easily change to another therapist. It's also more affordable than traditional in-person therapy, and there's also financial aid available if needed. If you're interested in improving your mental health and living a happier life, check out BetterHelp by using the link in my description box, and you'll get 10% off your very first month. Thank you, BetterHelp, and let's continue on with the video. So this is the part where majority students miss and is the reason why they're not improving the next time around. You need an action plan. Now, the action plan is separated into the micro plan and the macro plan. Starting with the micro plan, redo the questions you got wrong. Look through your notes, look through your textbook, do some research, look through journal articles, some critics, what they're saying, and try to figure out where you went wrong. This is the learning aspect of test taking. And I guarantee you that once you do this, it will click and you'll be like, oh, why did I make that mistake? It was so simple. And I guarantee you that you will not forget this material for the final exam. Another important reason for looking at your wrong answers is to identify if there were any marking errors. Now is the time to go back to your teacher and let them know that they made an error when marking so that you could actually get the point. On another note, after you've reviewed your work and you've looked through resources, you've consolidated the material and you realize that you are actually in the right, you can go challenge your teacher for that mark. There is nothing to be afraid of for asking for a remark. It promotes healthy discussions about material and it also teaches you skills for the workforce. It's never good to be idle and not speak up for something that you did right. But if you do choose to appeal, make sure you have evidence or else you're just going to look silly. If you do have the evidence, bring that with you. Highlight it in the book. Bring the journal article. Bring the critic quote. Bring what you need to make your argument, to make your case, so you can get the mark. Back in high school, especially in English class, I would challenge everything because there was so much ambiguity to it. Even multiple choice, I would try to get the point if I felt I was in the right. And Sometimes I got it, sometimes I didn't get it, but at this point, you already got the mark doc, so there's really nothing to lose, so you might as well try it. Now onto the macro plan. So you're gonna travel back in time a few weeks before your exam, a few weeks before submitting your assignment, and you're gonna evaluate your action. Were you behind the material, and if so, why? Were you able to catch up? Did you understand the material? And if not, why didn't you ask for help? How did you study for this? would have another technique been more effective. Use these questions to figure out what went wrong and how you can improve for next time. If falling behind was your issue, maybe you should consider developing a study schedule. I made a video on how to create a productive study schedule that avoids burnout. So if you're interested, check that out, linked above. If you're struggling with content, be proactive. Anything that I didn't understand, I would start and then I would go on a little research hunt on Google. I would watch YouTube videos. I would meet with my teacher, especially in high school. Let me tell you guys, I stayed after school with my chemistry teacher for half an hour to an hour, getting him to reteach the material. And we would be going through questions and I'd be like, wait, can you do that again? Can you slow down? Can you repeat yourself? because sometimes things don't click right away and you need that explanation again. You need that one-on-one -on -one. and your teachers are there to help you. They just wanna see you succeed, so use them to your advantage. As for your study technique, if you are looking for a system that is both effective and efficient, 
check out my video on how to study for an exam in two days after falling behind in class. That video goes over my own technique that I've developed and gotten great results from. Again, everything is on my channel. I don't hide anything. I want transparency between hard work and outcome. And there's a follow-up video to that, which shows my memorization technique using Anki. And a little bit different than uh, the conventional Anki method, but it's a very interesting, very fascinating technique that I think you guys are going to love. Both those videos will be linked above. As we near the end of this video, I wanted to just provide some final thoughts because I know grades are touchy and I'm trying to break that stigma between grades and self-worth. They do not dictate your intelligence. I will say this now and I'll say it a million times. They do not indicate how smart you are. They simply indicate how well you're able to be tested on, how well you're able to learn information and regurgitate it on a test format and unfortunately this is how competence is measured in our education system and it is a shame but it is how it is and because that's the system we operate in i want you guys to be the most successful in that system i really hope this video made you feel better it is a universal experience to get a bad grade and to feel sad and to just feel like all your hard work has gone to waste but it hasn't gone to waste every time you put an effort you are allowing yourself the opportunity for growth and maybe you see this as a little bit of a dip but that dip is still growth and you can never fault someone for working hard and it will all pay off eventually your time will come and it'll all click and when that moment does click it'll be the best feeling ever because you did that but it's a process and nothing happens overnight. So I just wanted to tell you guys to keep going, keep pushing. You are so capable and you're going to do amazing, amazing things. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to give it a like. Let me know in the comments what you want to see next. If you're enjoying these study advice videos, the hospital vlogs, the study vlogs, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified every time I post a new video. And if you want to see more day-to-day -day content, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Nathan.Wu. And for funny, hilarious, relatable student content, follow me on TikTok at it's Nathan Wu. But that's it for me, and I will see you friends in the next video. Bye.